people use Tinder because in your social circles, you can only know that many people. In order to increase the probability to know your future partner is that you need to increase the amount that you spend on socializing and using some algorithms to help you to find the potentially best perfect match that you are able to find and you might not know that this person exists. When Tinder became available to all smartphone users in 2013, it ushered in a new era in the history of romance. When it came to answering the problem of meeting new people, the app and the tech behind it introduced a more efficient and convenient way to do so. The tech that's involved in solving our biggest problems of the day is now made possible through the most valuable resource of the 21st century, data. But it isn't sufficient to just have the data. It's also important to know how to use it. And that is resulting in a huge demand of people who understand what the numbers mean and how to make the most out of them. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Lau. I'm a chief data scientist. I help people to build data applications that analyze the data of their company and organization so that they can optimize their workflow and generate more revenues for the company. Actually, it all started from my mother. So uh, she used to do a lot of uh, data entry for payrolls, calculating EPF and SOXO. I was a kid, right? I don't really understand her pain. Every month she has to do it. But I see it as in the way that I can try to enter different types of data and I can start to enter things like my toys, my books, and then the names of my friends. That's where well, I start to realize that, hey, that's, that's something that's very interesting. And I start to help her to do that. What did your mom think at the time? Um, my mom thinks that, well, okay, it saves her a lot of time and then she can do a lot less work. <laughs> that's why. But the first thing came to her mind. To be a data scientist, firstly, you need to know how to code. Then perhaps some mathematics to understand the statistics and probabilities and most importantly, some expertise in the field or area that you're working in. You need to know everything about the industry, especially how to frame questions you want answers to, and how to transform that business question into a data science question. Once you get all of that locked down, you're on your way to becoming a data scientist. I have never thought of the way that we analyze unstructured data such as images, videos, and audios can all be boiled out to the same mathematical ways that we use to analyze numbers. If you look at what Google, Facebook, they're doing, we will never have sufficient data. But today, with internet, with all the mobile applications, the markets are moving at a, at a very tremendous speed. So I'm not saying that you can't rely on your experience anymore, but you just can't rely on a single type of information uh, sources. And data science is actually the tools that help you to adapt to the changes as soon as you can. So with data, it unlocks a lot of things that you, you wouldn't know in the past. A lot of times, the innovation actually comes from something that is very simple, that's very easy, but the problem is not obvious. So for example, last time when you take a metered taxi from PJ to Pudu, some people will tell you they pay 50, some people will say they, they pay 80. And with your mental model, you will take 50 and 80 uh, divided by 2, so you're expecting to pay 65. And then when you reach the destination, if you pay 50, you're like happy because you don't have to pay so much. But if the traffic is bad and you, you end up have to pay a little bit more to compensate the drivers, and, and that's a fair compensation in the driver's perspective. So what Grab has done successfully or even Uber has done successfully is that they give you the certainty. You know that how long you have to wait before your taxis arrive and then how much you have to pay and what is your ETA. There's nothing uh, rocket science here in, in the app itself. Yeah. And we're not just seeing this in Grab. We're seeing such successes of using data to solve everyday problems replicated across almost every other industry. Airbnb to choose a place for you to stay, Spotify and Netflix to choose what you want to watch and listen to, and even bigger, more important decisions like what to invest in. When I was in Inti, I think one of the things that I appreciate most was taking some of this economics class. When you go out and access the news on the internet, you will start to see people from, from the valley or, or professors from other parts of the world, uh, niche ones, uh, starting to share about Bitcoin. And that got us really, really intrigued, right? If, if these people are paying attention to Bitcoin as being a new form of money that would transform the industry, I think we are onto something. What this means is that there is no um, sort of like right way of doing things, that like everybody is still trying to figure out 
how these data actually tell you some sort of insights of story. I love IT, I love technologies, AI, because you, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. I think that's the part that I'm enjoying the much. Some people call it uncertainties, but I really love to explore the possibilities as ahead. But when it comes to the aha moment, I think it comes from an individual because it needs to be someone who is willing to step out of their comfort zone to look at things from another perspective or to do something that is so unconventional, right? Something that is so counterintuitive. And that is usually where the aha moment is found. You actually start to see there's a lot of young people in, in, in Asia or, or Southeast Asia that do not even have a, a brokerage account. But when you ask them, like, have you heard of crypto or Bitcoin? They said they have. This is something that young people could relate to, something that is digital, internet money. And what this development would mean is that it would help to sort of like bring finance to this group of young generation who couldn't relate to the old way of doing things. I think that itself is, is interesting and powerful because you start to get a lot of interest from traditional institutions into this because they see that possibly that this is a way for us to reach out to, uh, to this quite young generation audience. And as businesses change the way they reach their audiences, jobs like data analysts and data scientists are set to be in demand in the next few years. Data is becoming the thread in the fabric of life. Just like any science, right? data science is just one type of the science. With chemistry, with physics, with biology, we start to understand the world, we start to understand our body a lot better. Now with data science, it helps you to understand yourself, the market, what is happening around you. I'm always working on something that's interesting, that's unknown, and explore the uncharted territory.